All right, so we just looked at how to find the distance between a line and then some point that's not on the line. The last thing we're going to look at in this chapter or in this section is how to find the distance between two parallel lines. So again, um, if you look at them, distance between two parallel lines, and you guys can probably already figure it out, would it be like from here to here or like here to here? It's going to be the same thing we looked at in the last video. Um, basically, we want the shortest distance between them, which is going to be that perpendicular line that exists between them. And it could be anywhere. It could be right here. It could be right here, right? But any perpendicular line, that's going to give us the shortest distance between the two parallel lines. So let me show you how to do that. And that's what this key concept says right here. Okay, so first example here, it says find the distance between the parallel lines A and B whose equations are y equals 2x plus 3 and y equals 2x minus 1. So right away, we can tell they're parallel just based on their equations. They have the same slope of 2 and different y-intercepts. And then, of course, they graphed A and B for us here. All right, so again, I'm going to break this down into steps. Okay, so um, if just looking at it, you want some perpendicular line drawn somewhere, okay? And you can draw it anywhere. Um, the more you do this, the like you'll be able to see like what's going to be the easiest place to draw that line. And I'm going to give you guys some helpful hints here. So first off, I said sketch line P. That's what I'm going to call this. I just gave it some, some letter. Sketch line P through the y-intercept of line B, which is right here at 0, 1. Okay? And we're going to make that perpendicular to lines B and A. So how do I make it perpendicular? Well, I do know the slope of these is 2, right? Up 2 over 1. So the slope of the line perpendicular to that is going to be the opposite reciprocal. So that would be negative 1 over 2. Okay, so I'm going to start from this y-intercept. I could have also started from this one, but I just picked this one. And I'm going to go down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. Well, that brings me that direction. So let's do the exact opposite of that, and let's go up 1 over 2 this way. Okay. Okay. Oops, I j just realized I uh, put this point in the wrong spot. Let me erase this part. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I go up 1 over 2 this way, that actually puts me right there. Regardless, I've got my point now, or I've got my little line that I could draw. I have it drawn better on the next page. So there you go. Okay, um, so go ahead and make sure you write these steps down, y'all. So our first step now is we're going to write the equation of that line that we just drew. So we have a perpendicular line drawn between them. We need the equation of it. All right. So as it says right here, the slope of P, that's what we're calling this line, is the opposite reciprocal of 2. So it's negative 1 half. That's our slope. And we can use the y-intercept of line B, 0, negative 1, as one of our endpoints of this segment. So I that's basically why I decided to start it there is because it's going to make the equation of the line really easy to write because now I have its y-intercept and I have its slope. So my y-intercept, my b, happens at negative 1 and then my slope m is negative 1 half. So the equation of the line would be y equals negative 1 half x minus 1. There we go. So now we have an equation written for this line right here. Moving on now to step two. Now um, we already know where this line P that we created, we already know where it intersects with B because we forced it to intersect right there because that was super convenient for us. Okay. We don't know where this is intersecting at this point. Looks like it's going to be some kind of decimal point though. So you may want to have a calculator handy. All right, so step two says use a system of equations to determine the intersection of A and P. So A is this line, P is the line we created. Okay, so I went ahead and wrote out the two equations. Line A, here's our equation. I know that because that's what they gave us in the problem. And then for line P, that is the equation that we just found. 
So now we're solving using a system of equations. Here is our system. You can solve it using whichever method you want. Um, I guess I will go with substitution here. I actually have two variables already solved for, so I've got y equal to this thing over here. So I'm going to take that value of y and plug it in for y in the other equation right here. So essentially we're just setting these two things equal to each other. So I'm going to write that out. I've got 2x plus 3 equals negative 1 half x minus 1. All right, go ahead and solve this thing. Um, I could add 1 half x to both sides. So 2x plus 1 half x is 2 and a half x, if you want to write it like that for now. 2 and a half x. This goes away over here. Okay, I could subtract 3 from both sides. So let's change this mixed number. Um, I think you guys learned that whole popcorn thing. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. So this is 5 over 2x. Let's just change that. Equals, and if we subtract 3 from both sides, we get negative 4. Okay, solving for x, if I want to get rid of a fraction, I can multiply by the reciprocal. So multiply by 2 over 5, because 2's cancel out, 5's cancel out. Got to do the same thing over here. Multiply by 2 over 5. Okay, so we get x equals, that would be negative 8 over 5. So kind of ugly, it's not a whole number, but that's okay. Negative 8 fifths. So that's our x value. Um, we would need to plug that back in now over here to find our y value. Um, let's maybe plug it into the one that doesn't have a fraction. Let's plug it in up here. So we'll go y equals 2 times our x value, which is negative 8 over 5 plus 3. Of course, you guys have calculators if you'd rather use that. Um, this would be y equals negative 16 over 5 plus 3. Just for the sake of time, instead of adding fractions together, go ahead and put that in your calculator, and you're going to get y equals negative 1 fifth. Okay, so we got our y value. Hopefully we did that right. I've got the answers right here. Yeah, we got negative 8 over 5, comma, negative 1 fifth. Or if you want to change them to decimals, I'm totally fine with that here. Negative 1.6, negative 0.2. It's kind of easier to look at whenever you have the decimals because that actually does look like the intersection point over here.